Hey, what's happening, guys? Dan Darrow here with another Options and Play video update. Uh, we are rolling through earnings season and into the retail portion. And, uh, yeah, we may not have as many big tech names to look forward to, but there are a couple. And I actually really like retail um, trading retail reports because typically pretty volatile. Um, so this week kind of jam-packed um, and also... Um, expected to get more vaccine news, um, both from Pfizer and also probably from Moderna too. So I think it's just shaping up to be a real busy week. Um, before the open, things get started. JD, big, big Chinese e-commerce report. Um, they're pricing about nine points. Um, Baba Mix, PDD was was great and they crushed it. The stock has been tearing higher this week. Um, so JD, the last of the three. Um, have to imagine the numbers are solid, but it's kind of harder to figure out what's priced in at this point. Um, you know, it's just off its 52-week high, basically at its 52-week high. Um, the chart does look pretty good to me, though. I mean, I feel like if I had to lean one way, I'd lean bullish. Um, if I did something, it would probably involve longer-term options, though, because it's not typically a huge, huge mover, and it is right at 52-week high, so... I feel like there might be, you know, an option crunch if it doesn't have a big move right away. So maybe something speculative, maybe something longer, longer dated on that one. Um, Palo Alto, so about uh, 19 points is what's priced in on this. Um, cyber names, so cyber software names, they've been tough money um, this quarter, even like really last quarter too. Palo Alto even more so than like the group. I mean, I, I just have not really had like a good feel for it. Um, Street hasn't rewarded for good numbers. Um, the stock has really gone nowhere for a couple months. Um, option pricing at, at like 19, I mean, it really, really needs a big move, and that would be bigger than the, what it's done the last two quarters. So it's kind of a tough call. It's a toss-up to me. Um, I still always like look at the potential of the long-term chart and think if it gets through 260, you know, with some serious volume and really breaks out, maybe as a path past 300, but definitely, definitely, definitely speculative. After the close on Monday, um, so Baidu first up ten and a half points. Um, it's interesting that this and YY report on the the same um, night because these two have been linked in M and A stories recently. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if something's coming. Um, Baidu though looks pretty solid on its own, um, but it did get hit pretty hard last quarter. It's good, it's, it's rebounded, but it did get hit pretty hard last last time it reported. So I mean, to me, it looks like it's turning the corner. All right, when I scroll out a little bit, you can see what I mean. I mean, it's trying to turn the corner here. So I feel like it, it looks pretty good. And maybe if there is some some truth to, like, those those YY, that YY chatter, maybe it would be good for both Baidu and YY because they're both considered pretty cheap um, from, like, a EPS kind of perspective. And then YY, like I said, um, pricing in um, nine points. And, again, I mean, I... I I feel like Baidu, from like a technical perspective, looks a little bit more interesting. But why? Why? If there is some truth to that M and A chatter, I mean, maybe look at like some sort of like lotto trade on that one, like something like further out of the money. Smile Direct also Monday after the close, so about dollar uh, seventy is what's priced in on this. Visaline was up huge on earnings this quarter, so I mean, I think this is more interesting now. Um, it didn't have a great report last time, but. Maybe Invisalign is signaling that things are really getting better in this space quickly. Um, I think if they turn in like a strong report, a really strong report, there could be big upside because this thing is like way off its high. It's also really heavily shorted too. So um, I might look at something on the bull side on this one. Before they open on Tuesday, big retail morning, um, Home Depot. So about 10 points is what's placed in on this. Coming off the best quarter in company history. Um, so I'd expect momentum to continue this quarter. I was thinking that stock could rally ahead of time, so we'll be watching for that. Um, uh, also, it does have a history of reacting kind of poorly to good earnings, so not sure I actually want to take earnings or take options into the earnings. So I'm kind of looking for a move ahead of time. Um, Walmart six uh, six seventy five is what's expected here. Um, this also recently has kind of re reacted poorly to earnings. Um, good earnings last couple quarters really good earnings actually stock right at its 52 week high um, it does have some momentum going into the quarter um, and I imagine numbers are pretty good but I just can't figure out how high expectations are um, this is probably the first time we're going to see the Walmart plus numbers too so 
Um, I mean, like that that could be a little bit more of a catalyst. I, I just I, I don't know. You know, I don't know how high the bar is. Like how much of a beat is expected. I'd favor the bull side, but I just just don't have a ton of confidence in this play. Coles, another retail name. Um, about three points. It was priced in on this. Um, I think like this and a lot of the kind of like beaten down brick and mortar retail names could be more interesting, not on earnings, but um, because of the Moderna data. Um, I, 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 I just, it's hard to imagine that Coles is really going to turn in a good report. Um, but if we do get some positive vaccine news from Moderna, that'll be, you know, two positive vaccine announcements in a row and that may really give momentum to the reopen trade so that's why i was saying like a, to me it seems less interesting as an earnings play more interesting as as a play on on possible um, vaccine news um se so about 26 points is what's priced in on this um e-commerce powerhouse um well e-commerce payments and gaming powerhouse really um stock has been a huge huge winner year to date i mean you can see i mean just a huge huge winner um, the issue is that it's been kind of choppy up in this area. And I mean, again, it is up a lot your date and e-commerce numbers this quarter have been mostly strong, but the reactions to them have been very, very mixed. Um, and you know, at, at 26 points, I feel like you need to be real confident it's going to move. And I, I, I feel like it's going to be good, but I don't have the confidence that it's going to be a huge, huge mover. So I might be more interested in just waiting for earnings to come out, see what the stock does, and then maybe look for like a quick tradable, like uh, swing trade entrance or something like that. After the close on Tuesday, Neo. So th this one should be wild. Um, Ten points is what's priced in, and as crazy as that seems, I mean today's bar was I think almost like thirteen or fourteen points, top to bottom. So um, you know. <laughs> Crazy, maybe a couple weeks ago, after today, maybe not so much. Um, I mean, this this has arguably been the best stock in the market for the past month, and I, I mean, I I really don't know. I mean, like I like, I mean, it seems like people still want to, still want to be long this name and still looking to buy dips. But XPEV was up a huge amount after earnings. Li was also up a huge amount, then went red. So I I really don't know what the type of move you're going to get on the actual earnings report. This to me seems more like a, it's like a swing trade stock right now and less of like an earnings trade stock. Um, but I mean, it, it has been really volatile and it has really been moving. So 10 points might actually not be that crazy. It might actually leave some room for some sort of volatility strategy. For the open on Wednesday, another big retail day. So Lowe's, uh, about nine and a half points what's priced in um, Home Depot is definitely going to set the tone for this um, So for me Lowe's is all about waiting to see how Home Depot's results are um, And then determine whether there's there's a trade left or some sort of trade opportunity left for Lowe's Target um, So this this is also probably going to respond to Walmart I mean, they're pricing in ten and a half points and they absolutely crushed it last quarter It was up a ton and that was partially because Walmart had good numbers and and like Walmart and Target both dipped off of that. So I I'm kind of looking for maybe some sort of similar pattern where maybe Target and Walmart don't respond too great to Walmart's numbers, but then Target goes into its own and it can have like a big move. Um, but also 10 and a half points doesn't seem too crazy for, for Target. Like there's not too high. And I think it might leave some room regardless. So I might actually look for uh, at a volatility strategy on this one. TJX. So first off-price retailer report, they're looking for about three and a half points. Um, definitely going to move the group. Um, and this and Ross stores both report next week. Burlington doesn't. So I'm thinking may look at like a sympathy play on, on Burlington because you have two, two of the re the two of the names report, the third doesn't. So to me, that sets up a sympathy trade on Burlington. After the close on Wednesday, big tech name, NVIDIA, uh, 40 points is what's priced in on this um, stock looks fantastic. You I mean, it's just been like a real solid trending name for months. Um, and because of that, I guess I'd approach it from like a trending trade perspective, meaning um, when stocks are in real tight trends going into earnings, usually to me, that's, you know, I'm expecting lower volatility. 
And as long as the numbers are solid and it maintains the trend, then I'm looking for that trend to continue. So um, maybe lower near-term volatility, but a resumption of the trend, higher prices over the longer term. So maybe something longer term options, like longer dated options or, or calendar spreads or, or something along those lines. Sonos. So two two twenty five is what's priced on this. Um, I feel like it's kind of interesting setup into the gap from last quarter here, um, coming up on the holiday season. Pretty cool pattern too. Option pricing not bad. So to me, kind of actually kind of like a decent setup for uh, like a, a strangle on this one. Thursday before the open, um, CSIQ. So. Um, the only solar name to report next week, 425 is what's priced in. Um, the sector has been a little bit quieter since the election. I mean, they were all over the place right after, but kind of quieted down this week. Tightening up around 40, you can see here. Um, I, I kind of like this pattern in the bull side. Um, CSIQ, not usually a huge mover on earnings, but a pent-up breakout, you know, if they really crush it, a pent-up breakout through 42, 43 area could be pretty significant. So... I might look at something speculative and further on the money on that one. Macy's, um, about a dollar is what's priced in on this. Um, so Kohl's likely going to move Macy's when it reports earlier in the week. But again, to me, I feel like the vaccine news um, would would be more of a catalyst for these than even like earnings. So, I mean, I I, I think that I think that the vaccine is is more important and. Um, if the vaccine news has come out prior to Macy's report, I don't know if I'd do anything with it. Thursday after the close, um, into it. So about uh, 18 points is what's expected. Um, actually, one of two software names on Thursday night. Um, they had a really strong quarter in August. Actually, the stock took off running real quick, um, real, real aggressive into that report last time. And, um, you know, I guess maybe that could play out again because they really crushed it. Stock has been chopping around. And, I mean, I feel like people are probably expecting pretty good numbers after last quarter. So it might be a decent ramp into the report candidate. Um, raw stores, like I said, um, this and TJX both report. So I'm thinking Burlington options. I mean, raw stores is pricing about six points on their own. Um, uh, Workday, uh, about 17 and a half points is what's priced in on this um had a real solid report in august but it had a more of an oversized reaction to it because that was back when there was like the, the mania in, in Techland, like this and salesforce were around the same time um i don't think we're in that environment again so i think it might be a little bit tougher to see a monster move on workday um i think that was more of like a, a symptom of the environment that we were in in september um i do think it's probably solid but it's not my favorite setup, so I think I'm probably going to avoid this one. Um, and then, oops, and then um, Friday before the open, uh, Foot Locker. So about um, 375 is what's priced in here. Um, this used to be a monster, monster move on earnings, and I feel like you could have set your clock to it moving more than what options were expecting quarter after quarter. Um, recently, though, it has not been as volatile, and I feel like it's a little bit of a tougher name. Um, there is a lot of positive momentum in the athletic apparel names, though. A lot of, like, good sales numbers in that space. And if you look at Foot Locker, you know, if, if they do beat and if it does get through, like, 41, 42, I mean, there is a lot of upside. So maybe I'll look at something, you know, maybe if they crush it and it gets through that resistance area because it really could take off and the pricing has come down a lot um, versus what it would normally pr um, um, price in, so... Maybe look at it. We'll see how the week goes. But that, that one, you know, I have on the radar. But definitely a game time decision for me. Um, so you can see, I mean, definitely a busy week. Lots going on. A lot of headlines. A lot of news. Going to get some vaccine news, too. So, I mean, overall, I mean, I think it's really going to be, a, I think it's going to be uh, a just, um, you know, kind of like a wild few days. And hopefully there's a lot of, a lot of good trading. All right. So if you like this video and you're looking for more information on trading earnings with options or option swing trading, please follow up with the link in the description of the video for more information on options and play. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay well, and I will talk to you on Monday.